All right. Hello everyone, it's Lisa Quilting in the Valley. We are gonna do Quilting 101 Part Two. So we talked about the tools that you really should have for um, being successful at piecing and quilting in our first one. This one, we're gonna talk about fabric and setting up your cutting station. So fabric, is there a difference truly between fabric from a chain store and fabric from a quilt shop? Yes, there actually is a difference. So the fabric that you get at a chain store, sometimes you will see similar not totally the same, but similar designs in a chain store. If you buy some of that fabric and then you find later, and it will always be later, the fabric that looks similar to that in a quilt shop, and you hold those two fabrics up to the light side by side, you can tell the difference almost immediately. So there are different quality of gray goods. That's G-R-E-I-G-E gray goods and that is the the substrate or the, the the fabric itself that they're printing on and a lot of fabric companies will test out a fabric design at some of the chain stores on lesser expensive gray goods before they produce it for the quilt shop market so does that mean there's something wrong with fabric that you get from the chain stores no it depends on what you're using it for so if you're going to make an heirloom quilt you're making somebody a wedding quilt or uh, you know, a christening quilt or uh, you're making a quilt for your own bedroom and you want it to last for a while, um, you probably don't want to get fabric from some of the lower end chain stores. The reason for that is the weave is a lot less tight, which means they ravel more, which means they fall apart sooner. So if you're gonna wash this quilt any length uh, or any number of times, you're gonna have some difficulty with it holding up. I can attest to that. Um, I made a king size trip around the world quilt for my in-laws um, when I was much younger. And I did not know that there was a difference in fabric and they washed their quilt once a month, whether it needed it or not. And it lasted about six months before it just shredded at the seams. And that's exactly what happened. It just shredded at the seams because the fabric could not take being washed. It wasn't the quality of fabric that could be made into a product that was being used like you use bed linens. So that being said, if you're going to make a Halloween lap throw that never gets any use and you're going to drape it over a chair somewhere and once in a while, throw it around your shoulders, knock yourself out with that, buy chain store stuff. Save your money for the things you're gonna use. Um, if you want something that's gonna last, I highly recommend that you look at a quilt shop for quilt shop quality fabric. And most of the major fabric vendors do not sell quilt shop quality fabric to the chain stores. Now, the other part of that is do that, does that mean you have to pay 15, 16 bucks a yard for your fabric? It does not. So there's a lot of variance in pricing in chain store or in, in a quilt shop fabric. So for example, they, most all of us have got clearance sections and most often you can find something neat in the clearance section that you can match some things with and make a beautiful quilt with. So there's no reason you have to spend absolute fortunes on your fabric. You can shop um, for quality and pay reasonable prices. Conversely, you can shop at a chain store that I'm not going to mention that has their quilting cottons at like 15 bucks a yard and they're just depending on you to come up with a coupon so that you don't really pay twice what that fabric's really worth. So watch your prices. Um, a coupon does not always mean you're getting a bargain. Uh, it just means you're not paying the price that they have listed on the shelf. <laughs> Whether that price is the right price or not is a whole nother question. There's a game to that. Okay, next thing about fabric. Do you wash it, do you not? Do what you want. I don't wash my fabric. I like the feel of the sizing on the fabric. I like the way that feels. I don't like the way it feels after it washes. As a matter of fact, once a quilt is made, I will spritz it and sponge bath it to avoid washing a quilt. I don't like the wrinkly, squished up, smushy quilt look. I like the smooth feel of new fabric. That's my choice. If you wanna wash your fabric, wash your fabric. 
There are no quilt police. There are no hard and fast rules. There's all kinds of different qualities of fabric nowadays. Most quilt shop quality fabric is made with reactive dyes, which means that the dye does not bleed that much. There are always gonna be fabrics that bleed, uh, typically navy blues, reds, blacks, some of the deeper, more intense colors will bleed. There are products that will help you with that. Use a dye catcher, use Synthrapol, use Retain. Uh, there's a lot of things that can avoid bleeding um, after the fact. So if you choose to, to wash your fabric before you make your quilt, knock yourself out with that, that's perfect. If you like to do that, then you should do that. That's your choice. Um, if you prefer not to wash your fabric, then don't wash your fabric. Again, that is your choice. Now, that being said, if you're gonna wash the fabric for the top of your quilt, you really need to wash the fabric for the back of your quilt too, so that they're shrinking at the same rate. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have uneven shrinking. Um, other than that, wash it or don't, it's your choice. Do what you want. Um, I did have a lady that bought batting once and she thought she had to pre-wash her batting and she threw her batting into the washing machine and washed it. And what she got was a large sodden mass of goo that came out of the washer. So don't pre-wash your batting. Uh, your batting can't be washed really until it's in a quilt. So don't do that. Okay, so fabric, there we go. Get the best fabric you can afford. Um, look for quality fabric at good pricing. There's nothing wrong with that. Choose your fabric according to the project that you're making. Put your money where you want it to give you the best value. Now let's talk about your cutting station. So we're about ready to cut our quilt for our Quilting 101. You want to get your cutting station set up so that you're not going to kill your back doing this. If you look at a lot of the sewing room setup books and a lot of the blogs and the magazine articles and stuff, what they will tell you is that your cutting table height should be right about where your elbows bend. And that's to avoid you bending over or having to put unnecessary pressure down in a weird angle. So, you know, I had to crank this table up. I'm a tall gal. So I had to crank this table up to be right for me. This is about the right height for me. It's right where my, my arms are resting down like this. This table is up to a nice height and I won't have to bend over it and hurt my back when I'm cutting for a long time. I'm gonna use my quilter select ruler. I have my handle on it. The reason I have my handle on it is because that quilter select ruler doesn't move on the fabric. So if I need to cut multiple strips, I need to be able to move my ruler on the fabric. So you wanna be safe. How do I know you want to be safe? Let me tell you a story. So I was in the store once and I was cutting some white fabric and I was ready to go. I'm going like this. I had my thumb out too far and I went like this and the woman said, hey, look at that. And I went, what? And I cut the whole end of my thumb off. So the nail all the way across, I had exposed nail bed and the whole end of my thumb was laying on the top of my ruler. And I don't know if you've ever cut your thumb like that, but man, does that bleed a lot. <laughs> I didn't even know I'd done that. I just went to the bathroom and went like that, so I didn't get any blood on her fabric. It wasn't until I came back that I saw that my thumb was on the ruler. I can tell you from personal experience, that hurts a lot. So <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> there are, if you're worried about that, there are some products that you can get. Olipfa, O-L-I-P-F-A, Olipfa makes a lip edge product that sticks the length of your ruler and it'll put a barrier between you and the outside edge of that ruler so you can't do what I did. Um, I can tell you that immediately after I did that I had a lip edge ruler up there for uh, time thereafter. <laughs> I'm past it now, whatever. I mean I quilted for 20 some odd years before I did that and never did anything so anyway. Okay so when you're cutting you're always going to use your ruler to measure with. You don't want to use your mat unless you have taken your ruler and you have matched it up and you see that your ruler, the markings on your ruler are identical to the markings on your mat. If you're off a 16th of an inch, that becomes an eighth of an inch for every seam. 
If you're making a nine patch, that becomes a quarter inch for that one nine patch. And if you're putting eight nine patches going across, that's two inches difference you can get if it's just a sixteenth of an inch off. So make sure if you're measuring, you've matched your ruler up to your mat to verify that they are identical. Otherwise, always use your ruler for your measurements, not your mat. Okay, I'm gonna do some quilting in terms. This is a width of fabric cut. This is the selvage. The selvage, you can see, has kind of like pinholes in it. That's where they attach it to this machine where they print the fabric. So it's attached on these little pins. It runs through this big, long machine, and they print on top of it. And then it gets bolted after that. But they need the selvage in order to hold it onto the machine to print on it. You're not going to use the selvages. So a lot of the time... If you are making uh, block parts, you want to make sure that the selvage is gone. So the easiest way to do that is just line up, take your ruler, get over here and get rid of it. You should have, if you're using quilt shop quality fabric, you should have a good 42 inch usable fabric in between the selvages, usually more, but you should have 42 inches. So I have my ruler lined up. I'm square, I'm square. My cutting table height is where it should be. I'm not bending over, I'm not hurting my back. And I'm gonna use this cutter. This cutter, if I drop this on my hand, I'm not gonna cut my hand because the blade is not exposed until I pull the trigger. I'm gonna hold my wrist like this. You don't wanna be up on top of it. I've seen some people try to cut like this. This is really hard on your wrist, it's really hard on the blade, and it digs holes in your mat. Keep your wrist like this, and you're driving it ahead of yourself. So start before your fabric, nestle the blade against the ruler, and just press forward. One smooth glide, and then off it goes. Okay? That's all we're gonna talk about for this particular video. Um, you're going to want to take a look at your fabrics. The next one we're going to do, I'll do another one uh, tomorrow, uh, Quilting 101. We're going to actually start cutting our kit. Um, if you have a kit or fabric, if you didn't get a kit, we're going to start cutting our pieces tomorrow. But in the meantime, you want to make sure your cutting station is set up. You're at the right height, so you're not going to hurt your back. You've got your tools in place, and you know how you're going to measure. You've either washed or not washed your fabric, whatever your choice is and then we'll be raring to go. We'll see you tomorrow.